All right, hello everybody. Welcome back for another breakdown. And this one is going to be a little bit shorter. I just saw this commercial uh, in the archives that I had, and I thought, man, this is a good looking little section here, something to break down. This is for Frosted Flakes, right? Let's take a look here. Oh, yes, Frosted Flakes are good. Yum. I'm hungry. I wish I had a bowl of flakes. Ah, <gasps> me too. Where's the water? I don't know. Quick. Oh, devastation. When you're a youngster, you'll never come back from it, kid. It'll haunt you for the rest of your life. And shadow is good. Basketball's fun. And you see where this is going. Oh, no. They're turning the lights out on these poor kids. Where's Tony the tiger? Get him in there. And Tony. There he is. And let's see. Tony. And you get where this is going, right? One of those sportsy commercials. I mean, I think we've done a few of these where we talk about all this handheld movement, how you do it, the shot selection, keeping things going with the pace and the lighting and in these big spaces. But these are really the, the front two scenes up here is really where the goods are. And it's this scene in particular. Uh, if we play this out, go from the close up to the big giant wide. I love that move. And this is often something you'll see in commercials, uh, especially when you're in the anamorphic world. You'll go from diopter close to super big wide back to like a this range close up. Uh, I won't name any names, but a couple of cinematographers have made uh, careers off of doing that technique. And it's not a bad technique because you can make things look really good, really, really good in the diopter world. And then this is pretty much the easiest distance to make things look good. This exact distance, right? The closer you get, the easier it is. Uh, but there, you know, there's a point of diminishing returns. Here is a good looking image. So let's start with this one, right? Now this is the difference between in the commercial world, a shot like this is very, very expensive. In the do it yourself world, in the I'm going to make a spec ad, this is significantly easier, right? Because let's say you find this location that is amazing, that let you drain the pool, whatever it is. Uh, getting lights in here big enough to have this level of ambient and then have this level of darkness around the place and also a second sun up here coming this way. You could time it right where the sun is coming through the windows. On commercials, that's probably never going to happen. You're probably never going to time it right uh, because you have 15 other things to get through during the day and you don't know if you're off here by an hour, you're not going to get these this angle of light that you want. So you're going to have to light it up yourself. And each one of these is going to require, you know, 1M90 to fill the whole thing up. You're going to have to diffuse the windows. It gets really expensive really quickly, which is why on a lot of the bigger budget things, you see enormous wides because enormous wides are really hard to do, especially good looking ones. Uh, you know, terrible looking wides are cheap, but good looking ones like this are really hard to do. The lower down you go, the more freedom you have with the time and the schedule, and you can get something like this. But let's just look, for example, I mean, we're not even going to talk about the composition of the shot, all of the angles in here to make it nice. We've got all of the markings of the framework here. We've got highs over here, and we're going to be lighting from windows that we can't see when we cut to the close up. So in this wide, this is the line, right? Running straight through this kid. This is the line. And anywhere on this side of the line, we are going to be able to shoot any length of shot, anything looking this way, right? Looking this way or looking back this way, depending on what back here looks like. As long as you're on this side of the line, you're good. Now, this is a perfect example of the balance of the image, making it feel dark, but not making it feel crushed or uh, not well done. Like there's nuance in the shadow, which makes it feel very rich. Like look at the levels here. Yes, this is dark. This is bright. And this is really bright here, right? But look at the levels on the scopes here. Not that dark, not that bright right? It's just relative to each other. So this to this, right? That is the part that makes it feel, ooh, there's a little bit of something going on here. And then you get Tatooine, and then you get a little tiny edge on our man in here. A little guy in there. He's super far away, and this is a good looking shot. Now, when we go in, let's go back. Now, we are definitely lighting from the window that we can't see, because we're faking like, oh, this is, it's just a light coming from over here, which is this window here right? That's what we're telling ourselves in our minds when we're looking at this going, yeah, that's the light. But really what you can do here, you now have ultimate freedom to light from anywhere over here. If you don't like how stark it is here, I mean, I like that how stark the angle is on the light. You can pull it this way a little bit and just add the wrap around. We'll say one thing, 
if you're going to do, if you're going to change the angle on this light and you're going to wrap it around to the other way, this is where things can start to fall over because the balancing is the really hard bit. The balancing of your human input fake light and your eye on the day and coordinating the crew and getting the right, the light in the right spot. That is what complicates things and makes things really hard. The simpler you can make the setup, the less chance you're going to screw it up. And let me tell you, uh, if you make it anything above zero complexity, you're going to screw something up, especially when you're starting out. So try, you know, if this is the look that you're happy with and you're happy for this level of uh, the angle of the light relative to the face, and it works just in the location itself, go with that because it's going to be, it's, you, you're going to be able to see much less manipulation because adding a four by four frame over here with a sky panel in it, just to help wrap it ever so slightly is going to be more difficult to do because you need the balance of an eye to say, oh, that's a little bit too much or it's not enough. And your little, you know, maybe you can get away with a light meter and you can set those levels to exactly, you know, your eye knows or your light meter knows that you want it half a stop under or a stop under. But by the time you know that stuff, you've gotten so good that you don't need the meter. <laughs> you can just look at the image and say, oh, it's got to be a little bit darker. So a light meter is great for teaching you the things that you like and reinforcing at what levels you like things. But for practical workflow on set now, especially with the, the digital world, it's, it's, less, um, it's less useful on the day, I would say, or less beneficial. So here, I mean, there is something over here, right? There's some little return. You can feel it. It's just like a different color in the skin. If you didn't want that, you could just go neg this side, right? Just neg over here and shooting into the light gets you that little tiny bit of highlight there. And we're also shooting into the corner of the whole pool over there. You can see that is where, if we go forward, right? That is this corner here. Why is the pen so big? Why does it always do this to me? Right, that little corner. And that just gives you more depth when you come to the close up, right? Even though it's super blobby. You see that little transition in color right there? That makes it interesting. And then this little highlight down here, the return, this beautiful light here, right? You can feel there's definitely something coming from the front because you have all of this level on his chest, right? You just can't see it because his nose is blocking where the light would be hitting his face, the nose is blocking it. But there's something coming around. But this is where, once you get into this world, it's very, very simple because you are literally standing next to the four by floppy. So you just close the floppy off if you want more or you open it up if you want less, or you push it away. You don't have to, you know, get on the comms to the key grip and be like, hey, move that thing, or to the electrics and be like, okay, let's lower and raise the thing. No, it's right there. It's all around you. It's very close. And that is why if you can do this shot, right, if you can make this shot, you can do this. There's the only thing is more planning and more complexity and less of you doing anything. Here, you're going to do lots of work, right? Where is it? Oop, come back here. Here, you're going to be the one pushing the floppy. doesn't matter how many people are on set or on the crew. You're going to be right there with the person maybe that's moving the thing. It's very easy to do. Uh, same with setting where the diffusion is going to go. You can just reach out your hand and slightly adjust it. Or you can go over to the sky panel and dim it down yourself because it's right behind the diffusion. Right? You can do all those things. Here, it's the exact same uh, theory that you have to do. It's just that you have to plan way in advance. So instead of having your sky panel, you're going to have your four M90s out there right? And it's going to be like, well, should we put them all on stands? Or should we put them all on a truss? Uh, those are the types of decisions then you have to start making. It's like, what's going to save us more time putting it all in one big truss and raising it and lowering it as we like it? Or we do individual stands, how long do they need to bump in? How much gear is this going to be? Where is the power coming from? All of those things, it does get more complicated. But you have team members there, if you're going to do this big wide in a commercial world, and you're going to have four M90s out there, or four 18 Ks, you, you're going to get people that know what they're doing too. So you still have to answer the same questions, which is what do we want the thing to look like in the end? That's really all it comes down to. And here is a perfect example of that. Another great example is in here with our gal in the, I mean, it's all beautiful cinematography here, but this shot, I mean, this is, this is my kind of cinematography. If my stuff looked like this and matched with the wide like that, and this is what you want, right? That little, yeah, there is a fire inside of the gymnasium. That's why she's probably the only one in here. She should escape unless she's the one that started it. But man, that the density, right? This is what we're looking at. The openness of the shadows right in here. The density relative to the key light. You can see it's just coming over, right? We've got multiple shadows. That's okay. There's some light coming from over here. And then there's that little wrappiness that comes around this way. You can see just a slightly harsher edge that is there. But it's 
this is perfect. <laughs> Again, into the room back there, so you get that V line, even though it's out of focus. The angle on the face, okay, that's your own personal style. I probably, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of looking down at people. Um, I'd rather look flat on or slightly up at them. That's just, again, personal preference. But man, the, the lighting here, the key, which is this side, and a little bit of this, relative to the background, and the color of the background versus her skin, and then the density of the neg. This is the balance that when I'm talking about, when I'm thinking in my head, okay, we're gonna come around and we're gonna do just a close up of this person's face. This is what I'm thinking. Like this, we nailed it. We go from here, which is why, you know, again, we set up for the close up because in the wide, we're on the shadow side. We're lighting from over here with this light that you can't see because we parked it out there, but we're selling it as another window, right? We're trying to match the level that is coming in here. We just wanna match it with whatever our 12 by is giving us. We wanna keep all the shine off the ground and just shine it right at this lady and we use it with a grid, we do a little grip forest over there, and we just get a tiny edge. Now, it would be much more complicated to do this shot if she was over here, all right? Because now the light, instead of coming from here to here, which is, let's say, 10 feet, it's gotta go all the way over there, which is 20 feet. And that's harder to do because the thing's gonna start to spill and go everywhere. But in this situation, what you would do is you balance, come into the room, set up the camera, and you set to the room tone that you want because the room tone, all of this stuff back here, is really, really hard to set. You're gonna need, if you wanna change any of this, uh, it's gonna be really hard to do. So you might as well set it to what you want on the camera and then affect your key, then adjust your key to that level because it's the easier fix, okay? Same with like the diffusion on here. Man, you don't wanna put all that diffusion up. You want that thing already in place at the location. You look at the scopes, again, really, really down. I mean, this is just basically a white window. Haze, the reflection of the floor, and then all these little things, like these little edges on there, little edge on, her fo on the top of her head. We don't have much wrap here because we're further away, right? But as we come in, just make, make it perfect. And that is, I mean, that is perfect. <laughs> this is a beautiful looking image. Uh, just really, really well done. So when I'm thinking close-ups and density, in my mind, I'm thinking this level of contrast, I'm thinking this level of wrap, and you can see it here too, right? And this is just less wrap, right? This is more, we're pushing more level back here onto them, but this is no wrap, this is edge. So now if you want something to be a little bit darker and not quite as pretty, you go a little bit more edginess. You want it to be a little bit more flattering while still being moody, you go a little bit, tiny bit more wrap. And those little one degree differences will, uh, you'll really start to see improvements in the kind of mood that you're going for. So uh, if you're looking for, and this is something that you can practice I mean, you can do this on yourself uh, really, really easily, right? A close-up like this, you just go around, you fix the focus while you're sitting in your chair, you move the neg further away, you use window light, maybe you use a little LED panel that you've got something. If you can do this shot, you take the same principles to do this shot. You just make it bigger and you need more of a team to do it. So uh, that's a look at some really good looking cinematography stuff that you can do all by yourself and say, okay, now that I've got this thing, I know. And you can take your light meter and you can measure the ratios and you go, yep, I got it. I don't have to think about that again. I know if I want that look, these are the ratios that I have to get. If I can't get, if I don't have those ratios for some reason, it can only be a couple things. It can only be room tone. It can only be what you can't control, uh, neg and key uh, or backlight, right? Like what backlight level do we want? Do we want half a stop over? Do we want uh, no, do we want no edge light like this? How far do we want down these shadows? Well, if you like this look, you know that this is two and a half stops under or probably three three under, right? Three under whatever this is. So now you've got your ratios. What do we want the, this side to be? Well, maybe we want this side to be one and a half down, right? Just come up with these formulas and you can easily do it. Then you don't have to worry about it. It just gives you, it's like having storyboards on set. It just gives you something to go off of. I know, I know I want to get this. Well, you might not want to get that formula exactly, but if you get things moving and in the ballpark, it gives you more freedom to play on the day. So hopefully it helps. If you like this kind of content, you want to see this style of breakdown with feature films. We do it each and every week over on Patreon. Uh, the supporters of the channel are awesome and that's the content that they get for supporting the show. So if you're interested, check it out in the link down below. I appreciate it and we will see you in the next.